Hello, my name is Amanda Edmiston. I'm a professional storyteller with a background in herbal medicine. I created A Kissed in Time with the brilliant pupils from Doon and Deanston Primary School and some input from older residents over the course of a year. I decided what I'd love to do is look at some of the plant memories. Memories of the things that we used plants for, be it uh, traditional remedies, food, fabric, or just how we felt about the natural environment from main resources held on the Tobar and Dulcus archive. I interwove these with traditional tales, some of which can be found on the archive. Some of the older pupils looked at some of the remedies that were talked about on the archive. There was a great one that really stuck in my mind. You'll see St John's wort, its bright yellow flower coming along and amongst the photos here. And there was a lady up in Kalin, apparently, who gave a young man a sprig of St John's wort, Hypericum perforatum. Its folk name is Chase the Devil, before he went away to fight in World War I. He recalls how he carried it in his pocket the whole time he was away, and he felt it did indeed offer him some protection, for he came home safely. Many of you may know St John's wort as a herb we now use to treat depression. Maybe that's the devil it's chasing. It's certainly also got great um, traditional use uh, and properties that will help heal wounds. So maybe it's got a few elements that um, might protect you from harm in one form or another. We looked at how fabric was made from nettles at one time in Scotland. This was a fantastic element to tie in with the story for some of the children at Deanston Primary because Deanston is now home to one of Scotland's favourite famous distilleries but the building that the distillery is in was once a mill and before the current building was there well there was an old flax mill. Flax was no longer sustainable when cheap cotton came into Scotland and so cotton became the fabric of choice for the new mill. And uh, when cotton started to be imported in bulk from overseas, then it was replaced in turn by the distillery, which uses another plant, barley. We looked at how silk had also come into Scotland and we looked at the nettles again. The wonderful story that I'm sure many people will know of the girl who weaves nettle shirts for her brothers to save them from their enchanted swan bodies. Um, we also heard a great story from Poland, I think, originally, but uh, it's one that could be found anywhere across Northern Europe, anywhere flax grows, and it was grown a lot in Perthshire. Um, because flax is treated very much in the same way nettles are in order to break the plant fibres down. Um, it's retted first in pits and there was archive memories of the retting pits for the flax in Perthshire. Um, we then know that, it, that nettles were beaten in the same way flax was to break down plant fibres, to make them malleable, to make them spin more easily. Um, and so I told them the story of the, the Seven Swan Brothers, but I also shared this story that I'm going to tell you now from, uh, from a time a long while ago, before anyone had seen the value in flax. There was a king. A great king, but he dreamed day and night of gold. All he dreamt about was the riches that he felt he was owed. He wanted his kingdom to become a wealthy place. But he was a kind enough soul, and so when a cold, hard winter set in and the stone months were long and the icy wind was chill, and a knock came at his door. He opened it up 
and let the travellers who were passing his way in. Generous in nature, he offered them a warm bed for the night in front of a well-stoked-up fire, food from his table and a place to shelter until the snowstorm broke. In the morning, when the frosty air glistened with sunlight once more, the travellers left but thanked the king for his incredible generosity in taking in strangers. They said they would repay him, and one of the travellers handed him a tiny bag, a little like the one you can see in our kist, full of small brown seeds of the sort once left across Scotland by doorways to ward off witches, witches who would feel compelled to count each seed before they came in, seeds so slippery they trickled between the fingers. The traveller handed these seeds to the king and promised he would be repaid for his kindness. The king took the seeds and imagined the plants of gold that would grow. Surely this traveller had given him some kind of huge investment, something worthy of a king. Surely these plants would grow into the gold he dreamed of. But unfortunately, however much his gardeners and farmers tended to the seeds, gold did not appear. Just small blue flowers, the end of each tall plant, and the king, in a mindless fury, had them torn up, and when this did not set them to wilt, he had them pushed down into the muddy waters of his lake. There he walked each day, watching the plants, still there, not seeming to be curtailed, their strength, their rigidity only seemed to loosen slightly, and he felt they had not suffered enough for not giving him gold. He had his fishermen go out and retrieve the plants in nets, and when on surveying them he found that right enough they had just had softer stems, just started to break down a little, he ordered his guards to go out and beat the plants, beat them to a pulp. Meanwhile, he commanded others of his guards to go and find the travellers. He wanted the man who'd given him this worthless gift brought back and punished. The guards sent out across the kingdom, high and low over mountain, through vale, along rivers, until they caught up with the traveller, hauled him back to the king and put him in a dungeon. Meanwhile, the plants lay baking, drying out in the sun. The traveller was a good man, friendly and charming enough, and he got chatting to the jailer, told him about the plants, what he knew, what his intention had been, and the jailer, keen that no man be punished wrongly, agreed to fetch the traveller the kingdom's finest weaver. The woman Rosa was sent for and came back, and laughed and smiled on hearing what the traveller had to say. She went down to the side of the lake where the beaten and soaked plants lay drying now in the sun and took them away. She gathered them up in handfuls and span them anti-clockwise as you do with plant fibre, round and round until they became soft strands of thread. She then set up her loom and wove the thread into a fine cloth the like of which she'd never seen or felt before. And as the travellers told her, she then took the cloth to the king. And Rosa told the king the traveller's story. Now, of course, the king was a fair man beneath it all, however much he dreamt of gold. And when he heard what had happened and he saw the mistake he'd made when he felt this fabric, so light, so beautiful. 
he had the traveller released and thanked the man for his generosity. He had him a suit made of the first batch of his beautiful linen and rewarded him and sent him back on his way. And of course he took more seeds from the flowers and planted them again. Time and time again the plants yielded enough fibre to make metre after metre of soft linen and enough seeds to plant more again for the next year. And everyone, it being a story, lived happily ever after. Thank you very much for coming to visit the Case in Time. I hope you enjoy the exhibition.